We got our man, Mr. Basil Chapman. We, we're not going to ride these waves, okay? And don't forget, folks, every trading day, I'm in Mr. Basil Chapman. has an outstanding show, 10 o'clock in the morning. And he also has a great newsletter. You can go over to our website at TFNN. And uh, when you get to our website, you just hit newsletters. You're going to see the opening call on the left-hand side, second row down. You hit subscribe. You can get the opening call for one month for $149. You can get it for six months for $6.95, which is the savings of $199 or 22%. And you can get it for a year for $11.95, which is the savings of $593 or 33%. Now, they all come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, folks. So come over here, check them out. When you get it, what you're going to get, you're not only going to get an outstanding newsletter, Basil has approximately 12 webinars out there that he's done. You can look at those. You can really understand how this market moves, how the Chapman wave moves, whether we're going up and or down. Basil Chapman, what's going on? Well, up and down. That's what we've been looking at for the past week. It's unbelievable. From Friday's low in the Dow, uh, that was at 30,635, we ran up uh, over 1,200 points in two days. We gave back quite a chunk today, and now the Dow is trying to stabilize. It's down 110. And one of the reasons why I said to subscribers, I'm just I'm leaning towards the positive side, but we won't know until certain conditions are met, is because if you look at the high that was made uh, back in uh, late March, where the Dow went to 35,000, uh, what was that, 35,372, if you do a vertical line, You'll see that the MACD was strong, the stochastic was strong, the unbalance was strong, the nine period was over the 14, then it pulled back. But when it went to the second high, that peak E at 35,492 on the 21st of April, the vertical line was weak. And that suggested that the MACD was weak, the, st the stochastic, the unbalanced volume, but the nine period moving average had to wait a day or two before it crossed negative. Now what we've got is something slightly different. The low that was made on the 20th at 30,635 had weak technicals, but when we made a low on Friday in that trough D, uh, the MACD was starting to improve a little bit. That's the histogram. That's those little vertical bars. And what you really want to see is that the, call the 0% line, goes positive, and that's usually a good sign. The stochastic was way above the high, the, the low that was made back on the round the 12th of May. On balance volume was improving. So it's a, it's a really a work in process and a work in progress. And that's what we're looking at right now. Because we've come back and now the Dow is only down 50 points after being down much sharper, actually went below the gap up opening on, on Friday. What we're looking at is there's a chance that there could be a rally going into the next few days, and that's going to be really important. And what you want to see, and I'm talking about the Dow because it's, so far it's been the leading index. If the Dow is able, first of all, it needs to close decisively above yesterday's high of uh, 31,000, what was that, 31,968. Um, if it does that, that's at least a very good sign. If it does it after tomorrow without making a new high, that'll start a leg B. And in that lay, whatever happens, the MACD, if it's able finally to cross positive, and it hasn't been that way since it crossed negative just after the 21st of April, if there is a sign that the, the MACD is improving and the stochastic, which is already very weak at 20%, is able to get to the 27 or 28% area and on balance volume rallies, finally we can say, you know what, now we can start tackling all those resistance levels. And then, look, you've got the, the nine period moving average right here at about 30, 31,900. You're just under that. You've got the 14 period moving average of 32,131. We haven't got there yet, even with the rally the other day, we couldn't do it. So there's a lot of work to be done. But, you know, I talk about this chat wave inside track propellant line. You can see it in the daily. We went under yes. but we, each time we've closed above it. But if you look at the weekly chart, it's very prominent here. So that the move that we, we've had since Friday, going into where we are right now at 3, just almost 3.30, uh, down 48 points. This is very important because to become positive at all, you have to start seeing this very ugly candle of last week with a high of 
uh, 30, what is that, 32,689 and a low of 30,635, you've got to start tackling that and that would take you right to the pink nine period moving average. So I'm saying to subscribers, it's a work in progress. We have some long positions in the Dow. Um, they're holding, they're doing okay right now. Um, I much prefer to see that the NASDAQ, it's not, it's not even so much the S&P, but the NASDAQ needs to get... <laughs> It, it really has to show some strength because if it, if it isn't, it'll just drag all the indices down. We're only talking about the Dow 30, but you've got the NASDAQ, which the Comp Index is 100 stocks and the S&P is 500. So this is early in the game, but I think we try to at least establish some kind of low in the 31,000 area for the Dow as some kind of support. So it's a work in progress, and I think that that's the way I'm looking at it just in terms of the short term. Once I can get some signals that suggest we've actually got a buy signal that's perhaps going to a buy mode in the daily Dow chart, I can start including, we've built up a huge cash position. I want to start using that with positions that have the chance to not be a three-day rally and then fail, but something that goes you know, for a couple of weeks, a good few weeks. So that's the position we're in right now. You know, you know, it's wild this time when I was just looking at something, Basil, is that, do you remember, you know, it's not that it's unusual, folks, but what happened this time, I was just looking, I just, as we, you were talking, I was bringing up the uh, S&P and the uh, NASDAQ Composite and the N NDX 100, and they all topped, like, within a week and a half of each other. And what has happened in the past, folks, is that sometimes it's like a couple months in between each other, Right. So that's a very, yeah, that's a very interesting observation. My, my, my observation of major lows and ma major tops is that it fans out like uh, right. March or January of, of 2000 and then March of 2000 with the S&P. So it's the down and the S&P and the semiconductors, yeah. et cetera. This is a little different. And that's, yeah. actually, that's <laughs> another reason why, why I'm looking at this and saying, when you, when you look, at the, the, look at this chart, if I had to tell you all the news since January that's been so horrible, and you've got the Dow from 36,952 to 30,635, that's 6,000, that's a lot of points, but you know, 6,000 points with that kind of news. So that part of it impresses me. What doesn't impress me is that there are so many NASDAQ stocks that are just struggling, and some of them actually are making money. They're good companies. They just be, they're in the wrong trend. Listen, folks, very easy to get Basil's newsletter. Come over to our website at TFNN. You're going to hit newsletters. You're going to see on the left-hand side. Just hit that button, subscribe, and you are off to the races. Basil, you have a great one, safe one. We look forward to the show tomorrow. Thank you, Tom. You too. Thank you. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.